Alright, welcome to 9.5 part 2. I now have Windows Journal working again as far as I can tell. So, for this first example A, we ended up with 6x squared plus 20x minus 120. And you need to know that the reason you want to try to use the, common, the least common multiple instead of just any multiple is because we're at a situation right now where all of these numbers that are separate, this counts as one group on bottom. So, but one thing out of each group separated by plus or minus signs is all divisible by two. So I actually have to take this one step further and divide every chunk by two. And now, again, this whole thing counts as one chunk because it's all stuff multiplied together. That parentheses with the minus sign just counts as something multiplied together. And then these guys are separated by plus or minus signs. So when I divide by two, I get a final answer of 3x squared plus 10x minus 60 divided by 12x squared x minus 6. Notice how everything in the parentheses stayed as it was. All right. Let's look at example B. So again, I'm trying to figure out what my least common denominator is. And basically, I got to figure out what does this fraction have that the right one does not? What does this fraction have that the left one does not? So please go ahead and factor the right fraction. I hope that you are thinking a 3x squared can be pulled out with a leftover of 2x plus 1. All right, and now ask yourself the question, what does this one here need so that it has includes everything that's included on the left? Notice the left includes a 3 and an x cubed. Okay, so this one already has a 3. Check. I don't need to put a 3 there. But this one only has x squared, and this one has x cubed, so I need an x to make it match. Now ask myself, what does the right one have that the left one does not have? So we made it now so that the 3x cubed is going to be the same, check, but the one on the left does not have a 2x plus 1 on bottom. So this one I need to multiply by 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1. Again, we're going to multiply the tops. So in this situation, I'm distributing that 4. I get 8x plus 4 on top of the left fraction. And now my denominator is going to be 3x cubed times 2x plus 1. For the right fraction, x times x is x squared. And I again have 3x cubed times 2x plus 1 on bottom. Once you have the same denominator, now is the step where I'm going to just rewrite the denominator. So 3x cubed times 2x plus 1. And then I add the top, combining like terms if possible. And I'm adding because it has a plus sign. So this time there's nothing that can match. So x squared plus 8x plus 4 on top. For our purposes, we're going to stop here. Sometimes some of the book problems, they might, after this step, factor and try to cancel. We're not making you do that for this class. So once you get to this step, you can be done. Once you have that finished written down, flip to the back. With C and D, we're looking at two problems that actually have the trinomial factoring, where we got to have the two parentheses. So for me right now, why don't you pause the video and factor out both of the denominators for part C and do go ahead and do D right away while we're at it. All right, here's where we're at. x squared plus 4x plus 4 factored to x plus 2x plus 2. x squared minus 4 factored to x plus 2x minus 2. And then you can see these over here for D. Now, we're going to do the same process as before. Step one, I factored. Step two, now I'm looking at what is lacking. So check this out. The left denominator actually has two x plus twos, whereas the right denominator only has one. So to make the bottoms match, this one needs another x plus two. And now when I look at the left side, see now the right side has 2x plus 2s and also an x minus 2. So this one on this side now needs an x minus 2. 
And we're getting a little more complicated now because they gave us a binomial or a two-piece thing on top here. And when I have a binomial times a binomial, I am going to have to actually foil it. So as they get harder, we're going to have to be doing more work. So here is me foiling it. Firsts, outers, inners, minus 2x, lasts, minus 2. All right, while we're at it, let's just combine like terms before I write my denominator to save some space here. So 1x minus 2x, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, or negative x. And then the denominator is x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. And let me tell you something. If you have something that's just repeated, you can just write it x plus 2 squared, because there's two of them. That saves you some time. So that's my first fraction. For my second fraction, I'm going to teach you something here that's very important and is new with examples C and D. See how there's a subtract sign right here? That subtract sign goes with the 2. So when I am going to distribute this, and, and there's two ways to do this problem. Let me just throw it out there. The first method is I could just keep it as a subtract and distribute the 2 and then distribute the subtract sign later. I personally like to distribute the subtract sign right away just because I think it saves time. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to say this is a negative 2 and once I have used it and distributed it, now it's just plus. But negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. The bottom is the same as what we had on the left side, x plus 2 squared, x minus 2. And now because I've already distributed that negative, I put a plus sign there. And when I have a plus sign, that means I can just on top combine like terms. So when I look at this, I've got an x squared with no partner. And when I combine like terms, I've got x squared. And then I have negative x plus negative 2x. So remember, if it's negative x, it's really like negative 1x. So negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3x's. And then for my numbers, I've got negative 2 plus negative 4. So negative 2 plus negative 4, negative 6. And then the bottom is just the same thing we've been working with, x plus 2 squared, x minus 2. All right, let's look at d. We already did one of the hard parts, which was factoring it. And now I specifically made this problem very similar to C so that you could have a, some extra practice doing what we just did. So again, think about what, what does this right fraction need that the left one has, but it's lacking right now. So notice the left one has 2x plus 3, so I need another x plus 3 here to make that mat. And for the right one, I need another x minus 3 or I'd not another one, but I just need x minus 3 so it matches here. All right. The left side, I need to foil that. So I'm thinking x squared and then negative 3x plus 1x. Negative 3x plus 1x is negative 2x. Negative 3 times 1 for the lasts is negative 3. For the denominator, I've got x plus 3 squared times x minus 3. Now, for the right side, again, two options of doing this. You can distribute the subtract sign now or distribute the subtract sign later. Your choice. I am going to, again, distribute the subtract sign now. So that means one, once I use it, it's turned to a plus. But when I distribute it, these things are going to be negative now. So negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. All right, my bottom is still x plus 3 squared, x minus 3. Combine like terms on the top. I got x squared. I got negative 2x plus negative 1x, so negative 3x's. And I, actually, that's the same thing I had before. Negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. There we go. Very similar to our answer for C. Let's look at E. All right. E is an example where you actually don't have to factor anything. I get to right away start multiplying. So again, ask yourself, what does the right side need 
What does the left side have that the right side does not have? Notice the left side has x squared, the right side just has x right now. So to make it match, I need another x, that'll make it x squared. And then the left side has a 4, and this one does not, so I also need a 4. Alright, what do I need on the left that the right side has? And when I look at this, it doesn't need an x, because it already has all of them, but it needs a 5, so I'll multiply by 5 over 5. Alright, I'm left with 30 over 20x squared, plus 2 times 4 is 8, so 8x over 20x squared. Once I have my common denominator, that's just 20x squared, add the top 30 plus 8x. Those can't be simplified, but see how every single piece, every single chunk can be divided by 2. And this is something that students are often confused about, so we can talk more about that particular thing in class, but because all of them can be divided by 2, I can divide every number by 2, and then this fraction is going to be equivalent, it's just times 2. Think of it this way, if I took this fraction and multiplied by 2, would I have the same answer? Yes, so it's, that means it's the same fraction, it's just scaled differently. Last but not least today, we're going to be simplifying complex fractions, and we are not going to finish all these problems in this video, so we will be finishing some of these in class. Um, so this is in this section because we are actually doing kind of some add and subtract and multiply and divide in the same problem, and basically, in order for me to figure out what this is, I want to pretend like this right here is a divide by bar. And if I'm going to divide two fractions, I need to actually make it so I have a fraction on top and a fraction on bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do here is add any fractions I have on top together, add any fractions I have on bottom together. And my goal is a single fraction on top, a single fraction on bottom. So notice, the top already has a single fraction, so that is just as I want it. On bottom, we're going to now do the process that we just learned, where I need a common denominator. I'm looking, okay, what does this ha left side have that the right side does not? has an x plus 2. What does the right side have that the left side does not? It has an x and then I'm going to go through this problem. Now, I hope that at this point you might be at the p stage where we know that the both of the bottoms are x times x plus 2. Hopefully you agree with me. If it's alright with you, let's save some writing and let's just write that denominator down immediately. So we know it's going to be x, x plus 2 and I know I'm going to add together everything I have on top. So when I look at what I have here, x times 1 here is x plus, and I'm adding, and now 2 times these guys, so 2x plus 2 times 2, 4. Alright, so really my fraction looks like this. 2 over x plus 2, and then I've got 3x plus 4 over x, x plus 2. Don't multiply these out yet. I know it's tempting to change it to x squared plus 2x, but you don't want to because things are going to cancel. All right, and here's what I was talking about with a fraction bar. What a fraction bar really means is divide. So what really is happening here is I've got 2x plus 2 is divided by 3x plus 4 over x times x plus 2. So a fraction bar really means divide. So what I've done by writing it like that is I've turned it into a problem that's just like what we did in section 9.4. And I hope you now remember, oh, okay, 9.4, when I have a divide, change it to multiply, take the reciprocal, and the point of this is things should cancel. So in this situation, you can pretend like everything, every chunk has a parentheses around it, the x plus 2 and x plus 2 cancel, so on bottom I'm just left with 3x plus 4, and on top 2 times x is 2x. So 2x over 3x plus 4. Thanks for listening, we'll do B and C in class.